mm-hmm. meditation summer is really about uh, demystifying the idea of meditation mm. and just bringing it closer to the public and really recognize that the spiritual aspect is part of a natural aspect of every human being mm. and not relating to a specific set of beliefs. Mm-hmm. It's really part of uh, our human capabilities mm. and just getting to know them and getting to use them. This episode, we're going to be talking with Neely Suhami, founder of Meditation Summer. This is The Pena Show, where it's all about inspiring you to live a happier, healthier, and more meaningful life. I'm Stephanie. And this is Juan. So your weekend went radically different than originally planned. That's right, babe. So I was supposed to go to a meditation retreat this weekend. You, you try to go every month, which yeah. is very good. Basically, it's like a silent retreat and you meditate all day and you do meditation, walking meditation and you sit in silence and you eat in silence. So it's, it's, a, it's a great way that I found to kind of calm my mind and um, be more present. Yes. Uh, <laughs> But it's hard to be present in New York City traffic. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to be present anywhere. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So I basically got caught up in a really bad traffic jam trying to get out of the city. And it literally took me two hours to get from Brooklyn <laughs> to Midtown Manhattan. And oh, so that's a bad I, sign. Yeah, so I just, I, I unfortunately had to cancel because I was already kind of running a little late, and I would have probably like gotten there in the middle of the night or something. Right, like that. right. So, oh, it's too bad. Yeah. I um, I was sad that you didn't make it because I know those are important to you and and that you enjoy them. But uh-huh. I was secretly happy too because <laughs> we got to hang out this weekend. That's so right. secretly, I was kind of glad that I felt, I felt like I was playing hooky. Or something. Yeah. Speaking of meditation, yeah. um, I was fortunate enough to do an interview recently mm-hmm. with uh, Neely Suhami, and yeah. or her Dharma name is uh, Ryushin, means Dragon Heart Mind. And uh, she's she's great. Yeah, so Neely is a former tech project manager. That's right. That found herself very attracted to Zen Buddhist practice. Yes. And we're going into her third year Mm -hmm. of hosting an event on um, Governor's Island for Mm -hmm. the month of June. Mm -hmm. And it's called Meditation Summer. Yeah. And part of what you're going to see during the interview is just how she made that transition. Because Mm -hmm. she's really somebody who wasn't very spiritual and didn't really believe much in a religion and she went to become somebody who was very interested in meditation and from there she kind of started this project almost like a hobby and it's kind of evolved in really interesting ways yeah yeah it's a great event mm-hmm. and it's free and open to the public mm-hmm. and you know, it took somebody certainly with a vision and mm-hmm. a lot of mm-hmm. determination to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we think you'll really enjoy yeah. um, the interview. Yeah. And also, depending on when you're watching this or listening, uh-huh. uh, check out Meditation Summer on Governor's Island. That's right. All right, cool. My first Zen retreat. Mm-hmm. So we sit, don't move. Mm-hmm. And you just sit, you sit in silence, you sit, you mm-hmm. break. I don't know how you guys do it, yeah, but like we much. get up, we walk for 10 minutes, we mm-hmm. go back to the cushion and we sit, mm-hmm. right? Your breaks are basically your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm-hmm. My own body is very unflexible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. within an hour, I went into pain. Like I didn't <laughs> need, you know, I know some people, they need the three, four days to go into pain. Yeah. I was given no flexibility in my body, so I went straight into pain. Yes. And just the first day was unbelievable because Mm. when you're really just watching your thoughts, and by then I knew how to watch my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so when you're dealing with pain, you know, first it was, okay, let me get out of here Mm -hmm. and all the different tactics of getting out of here. Mm -hmm. After that turned into zero Mm. right and big frustration there were a little bit of tears right Mm. but then 
there was my pride. So then I watch my pride go into my thoughts, you mm-hmm. know, and how I'm dealing with that, like mm-hmm. keeping my pride and my notion about my pride and mm. things like that. And then it went into willpower. Now I'm an Israeli. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know, you know, I've done so many things in my life. There is a lot of willpower, <laughs> you know. In, 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 this, in this body, there is a lot of, in this persona, there yeah. is a lot of willpower. Yeah. And so I sat with the willpower, and the willpower got me through most of the day. Mm-hmm. And I think this was the first time in my life that I got to the end of my willpower mm. throughout my career and throughout. I did many changes and, mm-hmm. you know, were ver- was very fortunate with my career. So, like, never, never, never mm-hmm. did I get anything that basically my will, my willpower did not conquer or overcome. Mm-hmm. This was the first time in my life when I exhausted my willpower. Mm-hmm. And it was so interesting to watch. For me, mm-hmm. it was, uh, and it just again shows you what I have in my mind and what it is that I'm watching. Mm-hmm. I just saw this Spanish soap opera, you know, when they open the door and they find your, <laughs> lo- your you know, your partner with the lover. <laughs> yeah. So it was like that. It was the uh, same. The thought mm-hmm. of pain, I just, I just was able to really just mm. see the thought of pain mm. and isolate that from the sensation. Mm. And so the thought of pain mm-hmm. had with it as a pattern, you mm. know, like such a dramatic mm. nuance to it, right? So it was the Spanish soap opera, right? It was colorful. It was dramatic. It mm. was like, they're killing me. This mm. is never going to be repaired, blah, mm. blah. And then it was just so funny. You know, we have a mind. We're humans. We have mm. a, this organ, our mind. And its job, it's to manufacture jo- and thoughts. Mm-hmm. You know, so these thoughts never stop being manufactured. They're yes. there. Yes. It's just your relationship with those thoughts mm-hmm. changes. Mm-hmm. So mm. they go by. That's excellent. <laughs> But you can see them come and go. Yeah, you know yes. you don't definitely need to hold on to them. Mm-hmm. You don't need to believe everything that goes on through your mind. Mm-hmm. You know, mm. and then it's just like a, a little child, you know, crying for attention. Mm. And then you you learn how to relate to it, to tame it, and when to listen to it, when mm-hmm. to let it go, when mm-hmm. there is an added value, when there is not necessarily an added value. So it's really empowering in a sense mm-hmm. yeah really being able to choose mm-hmm. where yeah. is your focus where is your attention mm-hmm. what is your action what motivates it mm-hmm. what is behind it you mm-hmm. know it's not a random thought or a random set of knowledge you meet your teacher you're, you're going to meditation retreats your your practice is uh, deepening you're empowering yourself with 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 your practice so then wh- where does the meditation summer thing come right. into play? Once I went to a series of retreats, mm-hmm. my sister came for a visit in New York, and there was an exhibit, an art exhibit at Governor's Island, mm-hmm. and we went to see it. I always heard about Governor's Island, but like many other places in New York, you're never there until someone comes and visit. <laughs> <laughs> and so my sister came and visit, and we went there, and then it's just uh, this magical little place mm. that is unbelievable. I think what the city has done there is really remarkable. Mm. They took this place. It's a, it's a small island right at the harbor, mm-hmm. uh, so situated between you, – you have the views of downtown Manhattan on one hand, then Brooklyn, and then Lady Liberty on the other side. It's just gorgeous. It's right on the water, a little park. It's all bike trails, mm. different activities, a lot of art, music, performances, mm-hmm. very casual, mm-hmm. just fun. Mm-hmm. I was overwhelmed by the experience in that island, and I love meditating, so I just looked for a place to meditate. After we went to the exhibit, we had lunch, and I wanted to meditate, and there was no place to meditate. And I was surprised about that, just because it felt very complimentary to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I went back home and I went to the Governor's Island website and I saw that they offer this public programming. If you have a program in mind 
that is for the public, you can write, you can apply for a space. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And I got a space. So the following year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, So you just you just kind of went there. You said it was a beautiful space. You thought this should be a space where people can meditate. And you took the initiative. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. A lot of people wouldn't take that initiative. Right. No, I know. It's just, it didn't feel like I was taking an initiative. It just felt like that's what I wanted to do. I don't even know. Like Mm -hmm. it wasn't, it didn't feel like a big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think once I applied and I think once I got the space, Mm -hmm. I was sort of like, oh, now we really need to (laughs) put in a... (laughs) (laughs) Now we've got to do something. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So how was that experience and how what how did you, how did you uh, go about organizing it? So I just I reached out to since I was meditating for many years I reached out to people that I knew and I just told them here you know we have this space um what do you say you know let's come and meditate so a lot of people again from the Rama Meditation Society the mm-hmm. first year a lot of people involved with that organization came together and took over the meditation sessions mm-hmm. and, and would offer public meditations. And I actually curated this exhibit about what science has taught us so far about the impact of meditation mm. on the human brain. Wow. Again, coming from a background of mm. a family that has an interest in science, to mm-hmm. me that was something that was very important. And also I thought I wanted something that would be always there as an attraction mm. you know we offer these sessions but mm. that's on a particular time so just you know throughout the day i just thought having an exhibit would be nice so with that we started with the meditation and the brain exhibit uh, i also added the speakers program just because again uh, my interest was um really integrating meditation into daily practice so mm. i think a lot of people might know people who meditate but are not really aware that some mm. of their co-workers or people mm-hmm. that they're friends with actually also have a meditation practice. Mm-hmm. Of course, nowadays it's becoming more and more popular. Mm-hmm. But still, just knowing that someone that you know meditates mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. actually thinks this helped them in their life, mm. I thought is a, is a very good mm-hmm. uh, Mm add-on. So with that, I also uh, started doing a program for a speaker's program, which is more inspirational. Mm. uh, Wow. So you had an exhibit, you had people come and meditate, you had meditation meditation, teachers, yeah. And then you had a speaker's program. Yeah. And this was just kind of a hobby at this point. It was just something you you were putting together. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, how, how did the first summer happened. go? The first summer was unbelievable because mm-hmm. really, mm-hmm. you know, there were two people that were outstanding. First, there was Reed. Reed, uh, he brought, he he taught a lot of the meditation classes and then he brought with him a lot of other teachers. And mm-hmm. he he really held my hand, mm-hmm. you know, when 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 I was overwhelmed and didn't know what's happening. He's mm-hmm. just more more experienced and more mm-hmm. knowledgeable mm-hmm. and really was just there mm-hmm. to observe. And whenever a little hand was needed, he gave it. So mm-hmm. that was amazing. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know Reed before mm-hmm. this. You know, this is someone who also just came about mm-hmm. as I sent out these emails who wants to come and join. Mm-hmm. So that was remarkable, mm-hmm. right? Like here are these people who are really interested in doing this and mm-hmm. in supporting. Mm-hmm. And then uh, another guy that came with him was Justin, and he just came, and uh, he and Reed entered the space. Mm-hmm. Now you get the space for free, but it's very, it's very run down. Mm. Uh, so they entered the space, and they're like, "Okay, we need to renovate." Mm. And so Justin comes with his car, paint all the other wow. equipment. I don't even know to say all that equipment, mm. you know. And he basically spent a week and just renovated the whole mm. space. Wow. And the space was unbelievable. Just mm. just wow. beautiful, mm. beautiful, beautiful. Mm. And, and this is all on a volunteer basis. Of course. All this is volunteer. All mm. this is just like really coming from the best intentions, mm-hmm. of just like looking to share something that you benefited from mm-hmm. and you feel adds value. Mm-hmm. So everyone involved really coming from that shared understanding mm. 
So mm. it was beautiful. It was beautiful. We had over 500 people come. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Did, did you expect that many people to show up? I don't think I expected anything. Mm. I was just... Uh, I enjoyed myself. I was just like standing <laughs> on the porch. I was talking to everyone. Mm. And I was just having a good time. Mm. You know, there was no particular expectation. There was nothing in particular set in mind. Mm. I think I was just surprised that mm-hmm. all of this is going on. Mm-hmm. I was curious to go into the classes, into mm. some of the speakers' programs, nice. see how is that being accepted, you know. Nice, nice. So it was a big uh, also learning experience for me. I never produced anything before in my life, you yeah, know. I <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. You just like I was I'm a just project manager, you You're know. Like, oh, like I do gonna... computer <laughs> stuff. I do like a business thing. I don't. I don't. I didn't produce something. That's wonderful. Yeah. So how how has it evolved over the years? And and um... this is going to be our third year, and I think that there is a lot. Like by now, I actually see that. You know, it's part of my own growth and my own deepening of the practice. So mm-hmm. of course, uh, I'm very grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second year, which was last year, was even longer. First year was six weeks. Last year, we uh, I extended it to nine weeks because uh, I had so many people who wanted to take part, and I really wanted to accommodate for that. And so last year, it grew into nine weeks, and I had 18 different speakers, and I had everything from mindfulness in after-school programs to the Search inside yourself, people from Google coming and talking about, you know, mindfulness for executives. Um, I had a program about um, drug policy and how we're responsible socially for for the things that are going wrong within our society and what do we need to do about that and also coming to that from a mindful practice. Um, it was really a very elaborate program that mm-hmm. really touched every aspect of our lives, right? But the problem was that I didn't have a team with me to support this. Mm -hmm. Like basically in the back end, it's only me. Mm -hmm. So there are all these people that are coming and doing and and doing amazing stuff and sharing their own thing. Mm -hmm. But in the back end of it, it was still only me and and I just exhausted myself. I could understand that. That's a major... The same as I told you about the willpower before. So I think this was just like another way of just like, you know, the universe bringing something that, okay, it's a little bit too much just for one person. This oh, yeah. needs to mm-hmm. to grow, and then it needs to grow in a different way. Mm-hmm. So again, a lot of people came, a lot of people enjoyed it, but I personally did not. I could, uh, I could understand why, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing this all on a volunteer basis too, yeah. It's a volunteer basis, but also it, it just the fact that this, the space is run down and this is meditation and the first year, you know, everything was done for me and it sort of set the standard. Yeah. The second year, I just renovated with some help, but a lot by myself. Mm. And so, and the renovation is really first like scratching everything that is there, then patching, then sanding, then painting. The space itself has no running water. So it's to go with buckets and fill water and carry them back. And so it's very good for my diet. (laughs) But But other than that, it's really, it was physically exhausting. Mm. And then, because it was so many speakers, and then I'm the host, mm. so I'm always on site, and mm. there is something about holding the space for everyone mm. who's coming, and then also people who come with different programming, mm-hmm. et cetera. It was too much. Mm. So I just really exhausted myself. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people at that point would say, this isn't worth it, I'm not going to do it, you know, screw this. Um, so what, what, what made you decide to, to do it again this year? I was going back and forth. I was not really sure whether mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm going to do it or not. And really what happened is I found out about this project called the, the Forgiveness Project. Mm-hmm. And I found out about them through an online magazine that I'm reading. Mm-hmm. And it's a really beautiful project situated out of the U.K., uh, Desmond Tutu is actually one of the founding fathers of that mm-hmm. organization. Uh, so they've been 
I think they've been around for over 12 years now. Mm-hmm. And they have an exhibit called The F Word, Stories of Forgiveness, which mm. travels around the world mm-hmm. and basically brings uh, stories of people who are hurt by someone and chose to forgive. When I read about them in, in a few places, I was very inspired by that project. Mm-hmm. And so as soon as Meditation Summer ended last year, I actually approached the, their contact person here in New York City, and mm-hmm. not in New York City, I'm sorry, here in the U.S., asked her whether they would be interested in collaborating with Meditation Summer. Mm-hmm. And they immediately said yes. Mm-hmm. You can ask, why did I approach them, right? But like nobody knows, right? But like I, I was really inspired by mm. them. So the, they immediately said yes. And, and me and their contact person, Louisa, we, we really connected, you mm. know. And so, and so she immediately came on board and started thinking with me what we can do with Meditation Summer and the Forgiveness Project together, et cetera. Mm. And so that really set, started setting things into motion. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, and it really gave it like a new a, a, a new a new path almost mm. it sounds like to me that this is a way for you to give to others so one of the teachers uh, of the groups that I sit with I was talking to him about me debating whether to do another season of meditation mm-hmm. summer yes or no because it took a big toll and a financial toll and an, an emotional toll and everything and And then he just asked me a few simple questions, you know, like, why are you doing this? Why Governor's Island? Like, does that matter? Mm-hmm. I did not know how to reply. So I took those questions with me home mm. and really sat with them. And then what came is, why do it? Because to me, it's the right thing to do. And I don't even know to say more than that. You mm. know, there is no big mission and there is no big, mm-hmm. but... It sort of landed on my laps and it's my project and I'm grateful to mm-hmm. have a project and to do it mm-hmm. you know that it's not it's not much more than that mm-hmm. but but it is that mm-hmm. nice, and nice. I'm and I'm grateful for it mm-hmm. and then why Governor's Island for me it's definitely Governor's Island mm. because there is a different sense about Governor's Island mm. so it's New York but outside of New York. And mm. so many times, especially when you have a meditation practice, you know this very well, you know, you would go far away in order to sit in some sort of an environment that supports the practice, et cetera, et cetera. And here it's very much near the city, mm. but feels completely different than the city. Mm. And also with the meditation practice and everything about meditation summer is about integrating meditation into your daily life. Mm. So we artificially create meditation. these spaces which allow us to get the practice learn it embody it mm. but then what we gain from it we want to integrate it into our daily life mm-hmm. and slowly slowly have no difference mm. between those yeah. spaces right mm-hmm. it's not really that like being in the city that the a high rise is uglier than a, a tree mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm But we have it in our mind that mm-hmm. we need this beautiful surrounding and it really does help us. Mm-hmm. So we want to do something that is mm-hmm. conducive to the meditation practice, to gaining these understandings mm-hmm. and perspectives mm-hmm. and then come back. So we put aside time, we put aside a certain space, a certain environment. We do that and when, then we go back. So we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until mm-hmm. this gap narrows mm-hmm. and closes Beautiful. itself. And then mm-hmm. you're just living your life. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're love just it. here with 10 Kata Podcast, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. If people want to sign up for these yeah. or, or contact you, what, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. So the best way is actually to go to our website, which is www.meditationsummer.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll see a list of the programming. We mm-hmm. do recommend signing up. When you sign up, it also gets you on our newsletter. We send the newsletter mm-hmm. every week. Just for the duration of the summer, we actually don't send newsletters outside the season, mm-hmm. outside the season, so no need to worry about it. Um, and then if you want to contact me or email me, it's just mm-hmm. info at meditationsummer.com. I'm happy to hear from whoever wants to come, partake, have a suggestion, 
etc., etc. One thing I wanted to add. Yes, please. Meditation summer, although I, I know we spoke about my own path, which is a Zen path, but mm-hmm. meditation summer is really about uh, demystifying the idea of meditation mm. and just bringing it closer to the public, you mm-hmm. know? And so, and really recognize that the spiritual aspect is part of a natural aspect of every human being mm. and not relating to a specific set of beliefs. Mm. So it's not about religion or a sp- certain belief system. Mm-hmm. It's really part of uh, our human capabilities mm. and just getting to know them and getting to use them. Mm-hmm. So really just gaining some skills in a very practical level yes. that you can actually take back to your life. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the teachers that are involved, they actually represent different paths, not mm-hmm. necessarily Zen. And this mm-hmm. is not an occasion to promote Zen in particular. Gotcha. There are different paths, different options, and from my understanding or in my mind, you know, they're all there because we're all different and we all have different ways to get us to a very similar mm. place. Yes. So it's not about the particular way that you are choosing mm-hmm. or your particular teachings or teachers. Mm-hmm. It's just about really gaining whatever it is that is for you to be gained in as a milestone to a greater understanding and to your own enhancement mm. of your natural potential. So Very well said. Very yeah. well said. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, well, yeah. I tell you, it's it's so exciting that you're doing this and it's a, it's a real thank gift you. to New York City and, and oh, people who, who um, and really encourage people to go and and participate and be part of it. I just, uh, I want to thank you. And mm-hmm. I want to thank you, you know, for doing your work and doing mm-hmm. this podcast. I hope you enjoyed that interview. So unfortunately, Stephanie wasn't able to be yeah, there. Yeah, I had a conflict. I was actually at a, a doula group. <laughs> so it was hard, a hard decision to make. But it um, seemed like you guys had fun anyways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got a chance to see the interview. That's um, right, yeah. Was there any part in particular that was your that you enjoyed? Um, I think the thing that was so surprising to me was just really the fact that somebody with a tech background Mm -hmm. and not really spiritual, um, you know, a long history of spiritual practice just felt so compelled to do really a quite, quite an undertaking that took a lot of work and, Mm -hmm. and dedication. Um, I would have given up tenfold <laughs> but um she really felt like this yeah. is her calling and yeah. she said i'm going to do it no matter what yeah. so i was very impressed by that yeah, yeah. i mean I, I think it's always when somebody has that passion to really pursue something that, that's something very inspiring definitely about absolutely yeah. we actually got a chance to go to meditation summer that's right um and it was really interesting because we, we met an artist. Yeah, tour. so we were there the first weekend of the, of the mm-hmm. what would you call it, a festival, I guess. Yeah. Um, and simultaneously was an art festival happening. I think the other thing that really impressed me about, about um, that artist that we got a chance to meet was that um, he, he had been trying to become a monk. That's right, yeah. And he said that he had to sit in the jungles of <laughs> Thailand and that there would be like <laughs> snakes and spiders in That's the jungle right. at night. He'd, he'd wake up and his floor would be covered in cobwebs and <laughs> sounds like large spiders and snakes <laughs> slithering around the floor. That's right. Compare that to um, the nice, comfortable places we go. I go meditate these yeah. days. Subscribe to our podcast, The Pena Show, on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, and never miss an episode. Pena.